Hi, I want to congratulate you on your new investment. This audio CD is just that, an investment, and it might yield the greatest returns of any investment that you've made in the past. Our bodies are a gift that, when taken care of, provide us with a vehicle for fulfilling our destinies, making our dreams come true, sharing the richness of relationships and experiencing life in an energetic and passionate way. I believe that you'd agree with me on that or it'd be unlikely that you'd have picked up a CD program like this. I designed this program to optimize our performance and I don't just mean our bodily processes and functions. Our bodies are the tool that we need to create fulfilling family lives and to work at our place of business which in turn provides us with the resources to live, to grow and to contribute. What you are about to learn in this program is not a course on herbology, vitamin supplements, reflexology, yoga or some metaphysical science. It's about maximizing our body's God-given ability to care for itself, to provide us with the energy and vitality to live compelling lives. It's about not having to get sick instead of suggesting pharmaceuticals to combat problems that arise in our bodies from neglecting simple fundamentals that could increase the quality of our lives without us having to sacrifice the foods or activities that we really enjoy. The benefits are that as a byproduct of educated behavioral changes in our approach to health, we'll actually experience those sought after changes in our bodies, the things like excess weight loss, increased energy and elimination of most sicknesses. The simple fact of the matter is that our bodies were not designed to be sick. The same processes that heal our bodies when we get a cut or scrape are able to maintain our health. I really believe that. And this is the incredible thing about our bodies. The actual nature of our body is not static. From science we can tell that nothing in our universe really is. We know that the earth is revolving around the sun at a phenomenal rate and that the earth also is rotating on its axis in the opposite direction at dizzying speeds, yet we perceive it as stationary. We often make the same mistake with our bodies, thinking that we have this problem in ourselves and there's nothing we can do to change it. Well, maybe it's time I gave you a few statistics. Your body makes a new skin once a month. That's right, one month from now, your skin will be completely different to the skin you're currently wearing, for lack of a better expression. But wait, it gets deeper. Quite literally, actually. I'm talking about right through to your bones. Your body makes a new skeleton every three months. Every bone in your body will be fundamentally different from what it is today in three months' time. New bone cells would have replaced every bone cell that you currently have. By the same token, your stomach gets a new lining every five days. Are you seeing where we're going with this? Our body is in actuality a dynamic biological unit capable of regenerative and corrective procedures far beyond anything that the fine doctors of our time are capable of performing. Am I against medical science? We'd probably none of us be here today if they weren't around to practice the skills that they've long studied and worked towards. I appreciate every doctor that has dedicated their life to serving and helping others. And in retrospect, much of the information that I share in this program all stems from the research performed by the medical society. All I am inferring is that we, in my opinion, are overworking our medical practitioners. This program will show you how to achieve results in your health that you would probably have considered impossible without radically altering your current diet or exercise program. If you even have any exercise program, so many people today don't, and we should. We'll deal with more of that later. We'll be identifying how to cooperate with our natural health processes and create measurable shifts in your health and all of this will be with an absolute minimum of lifestyle or dietary changes. So let's get started on a practical note. Have you ever found yourself lacking energy? Have you ever found yourself in a state called lethargy? Well, I'm pretty sure that you have. All of us have been there at some point. Most of us already know the cure. In the case of lethargy, your body is in a state of energy depletion. Your body could overcome the problem in probably one of two ways. Number one, you could eat a chocolate or a candy bar and get a sugar rush and then crash later in the day when your blood sugar level drops like a lead balloon because the sugar you just ate is a simple carbohydrate that has a tendency to affect our bodies rather negatively. Number two, you might try getting up 
and going to go and exercise and chase off those very feelings. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Why is it that doing exercise can do what the chocolate does and yet it works without the sugar? What makes the difference? Well, the answer is simple. If you haven't guessed it already, it's air. Plain, simple, fundamental air. Breathing to be more specific. When we exercise, our body's vital processes begin to intensify and require more resources, which in turn results in our bodies needing more oxygen, which in turn results in increased breathing patterns and the aeration of our lungs, and thus our bodies. It's this infusion of oxygen that our body receives from our deeper breathing patterns that makes all the difference. You see, oxygen is a fuel. It's burnt in a similar process to the way fuel is burnt in the combustion chambers of a fossil fuel motor vehicle. The process inside our bodies gives us this revived sensation of energy and effectively allows us to overcome our lethargy. So how would you do this? I've discovered a breathing pattern that facilitates this process of oxygenating your bloodstream quite effectively and I'll give it to you in the form of a ratio. Breathe in for a count of one, hold for a count of four, and exhale for a count of two. If you repeat this breathing pattern about 10 times consecutively, three times a day, a few things could happen. <laughs> Number one, some people begin to feel rather lightheaded because their body isn't used to all the oxygen. <laughs> Number two, you'll find a rush of circulation in your body and that allows you the energy to push off the lethargy. Let's try this right now using the breathing ratio I've just mentioned. We're going to breathe in and I'll count to seven. Then we're going to hold that breath for four times as long, or 28, and then exhale for a count of two, which is 14. Now if this count is too long, you can exhale. The important thing is not to strain yourself at any point during this exercise. Are you ready? Let's give that a go right now. When I give the signal, start taking in a slow, deep breath. And start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and hold, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, almost there, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There you go. Can you feel that circulation that's taken place? Now once you've performed this breathing exercise, and you now create this new level of vitality, I would then recommend that you do start to engage in some form of exercise, since you now know how to create the boost that you need to get yourself out of bed anyway. But even if you don't, this will still work. That's not all that this breathing exercise will do for you though. Talk about value. This breathing thing is loaded with it, and yet so few of us actively engage in it, and so little is written about it. Do you want to retain your youth biologically as well as in your appearance? Well, this same activity will help you to pursue that youthful glow at no extra cost. How does it work? Well, as you already know, your body is composed of hundreds of millions of cells, and it therefore stands to reason that our health and youth is dependent upon the health and youth of our individual cells. If our cells are unhealthy, we will be unhealthy. It's a case of a chain being only as strong as its weakest link. For our cells to grow and flourish in a healthy environment, it needs to receive nourishment and be cleansed of any toxins which are excreted by the cells. The area surrounding itself in your body is filled with a substance called lymph. Lymph fluid contains white blood cells that are responsible for protecting and cleansing your system. Here's how the lymph system works. Oxygenated and nutrient-rich blood is pumped through the heart and into the arteries. From these arteries, the blood moves into tiny capillaries from where these nutrients are diffused into the substance surrounding your cells called lymph. Since the lymph fluid surrounds every cell in your body and your cells have an affinity for the substances they need, they absorb the nutrients straight out of the lymph. 
the problem arises because the cells also have to excrete their toxins into the same lymph fluid that surrounds them. This is where all the old dead cells wind up to. This is aggravated by the fact that the lymph system doesn't have an organ like the heart to circulate the toxin-filled lymph away from the cells. Now here's the interesting part. Research done by, among others, Dr. Jack Shields, a respected lymphologist in the USA, has indicated that the process of deep breathing is the only activity that is effective at virtually flushing the toxins in the lymph system away from the area surrounding our cells. It can be compared to creating vacuum in our bodies that literally sucks the lymph through the bloodstream and helps the body get rid of toxins. Deep diaphragmatic breathing and muscular movement are the only two processes that facilitate this activity in our bloodstream. So again, I know I've spent quite some time on this point, but what's important is not that you hear how good the power of effective breathing is, but that you do it. Great. Moving right along. The next area that can greatly affect the quality of our health is taking care of our biochemistry. What I'm referring to is the chemical makeup of our bodies. How do we do that? Well, obviously, things such as smoking and excess drinking of alcohol would alter our body chemistry and should be avoided wherever possible. And if you're having a struggle in that area, you can also contact our office and talk to us about one of our programs that we have that can break the power that habits hold of you in one session using human behavioral technologies such as NLP, or that is neuro-linguistic programming. But there are other substances that are just as destructive in the effect on our biochemistry. One of those that I mentioned earlier is simple carbohydrates or sugar. Am I saying that you may never have sugar again in your life? No, that's up to you. And after I briefly expand on this statement, I'll make a suggestion that you may find helpful if you're a real sugar junkie. Sugar, as I've alluded to earlier, is a simple carbohydrate. What that means is that when it is consumed, it rapidly enters the bloodstream, causes our blood sugar level and energy to spike. Now that process may actually feel good, but as we know, not everything that feels good to us is good for us. Never is that more true than in the case of sugar. As a matter of fact, you can even tell that physically after a short time. What happens is that just as dramatically as your sugar levels increased, it will decrease. It's going to drop. This entire phenomenon can probably be described as putting your body into a state of sugar shock. It literally plays havoc with your biochemistry. Your body is designed to absorb substances at a steady rate and use its nutrients to fuel your body with energy, like a battery, not like a firecracker. On an interesting side note, natural honey does not cause this phenomenon and is absorbed into the body at a steady rate that is good for our system. I will make some reference to the actual process of nutrition in a short while, but first I'd like to deal with some aspects of our body and its health that are often overlooked. How would you like to dramatically reduce the number of pills or pharmaceutical drugs that you consume? Or maybe even eliminate that altogether? That has always been high on my list of priorities. I hated ever having to take external pharmaceutical drugs to combat this from happening and to prevent against that from happening. See, what happened was I grew up in a house where my dad used to take lots of pills. He had to combat various health issues and it made me want to avoid end up having to do the same. It drove me to want to study to find out why some people never had to take any of those pills and why they never had any of those problems. Do you know some people like that? Well, those people became my role models in the area of health. What I discovered was quite interesting. While it was true that many of them had better nutritional eating patterns and effective exercise programs that they adhered to, they also possessed another, less obvious quality. That quality is the ability to successfully manage their physiology and mental focus. I'd go out and hear someone talking and mention that they caught a cold from getting wet in the rain, and this healthy person would look completely puzzled. When I'd ask them about it, invariably they'd give me an answer along the lines of, what does getting wet in the rain have to do with catching a cold? If you get caught in the rain, the only thing that happens is you get wet. Don't they ever take a shower? Statements like those fascinated me because these people said it was such a level of congruency that you could see that they honestly believed that the one event had nothing to do with the other. Also, I noticed from these people that they would never act as if they were sick. 
Let's say one of them had a runny nose, or let's say one of them got a headache, or maybe even had a scratchy throat. What did they act like? Well, most of the time, we didn't even know about it unless it came out somehow through somebody that asked them a question because they saw something. See, these people didn't act sick. And because they didn't act sick, they didn't end up sick. That's part of what I'm referring to when I refer to physiology. Physiology is simply the way we use our body, the way we breathe, the way we move, the way we communicate our ideas to ourselves and to others. Often we get so caught up, even if our body should just feel a little physical discomfort, we adopt the physiology of someone who's sick. Let's try a little experiment. I'll wager that if I were to ask you to describe someone who was standing outside your door right now that was sick for 500,000 Rand, you could give me a pretty accurate description of the way the person would be standing and breathing. Let's do that right now. You tell me, how would this person be standing? Would they be standing up straight or hunched over? I imagine most people would say hunched over. Would they be breathing full and deep or shallow? Again, most people would say shallow. Would the muscles in their face be tight and up or slack and down? Again, slack and down most probably. Can you see that there's a way that we use our body that sends a message to our brain that we or someone else is sick or suffering? The problem with this is that when we adopt this physiology of a sick person, when the problem we have is not a major cause for concern or something that our body really can handle, we tend to magnify the problem in our own brain. Our brain starts to go, Oh no, what's the problem? There must be something wrong here, Jack. Look at the way our body's behaving. We must be really sick here. The point is, if you want to improve your health immediately, start acting healthy immediately. Breathe the way you do when you're healthy. Talk to yourself in the manner and the tone that you do when you're healthy. Stand the way you do when you're healthy. This simple strategy allows your body to stay resourceful, and that's important. It allows our body to avoid magnifying the problem and thereby to more accurately assess the true magnitude of any problem in our body, should there in fact even be one. On the subject of mental focus, there is an incredible wealth of information available in libraries and resource centers across the world that you can check out for yourself. There are amazing statistics claiming that around 80% of the physical problems we as humans experience are caused not by biological difficulties or infirmities, but by our own mental focus. The issue of stress and the like also fall into this category. Before you dismiss this idea, do your homework. Have you ever heard of a medical student that during uh, his years or her years of study at medical school find themselves studying certain diseases and begin to notice that they have all the symptoms? Well, it's really not an uncommon event. The truth is, if you want to find a problem in your body and you're willing to look hard enough, you will find it. So there you go. There's your clue. I think that all of us know someone who always has the latest flu and most terrible aches and pains between those flus just for good measure and it boils down to what you focus on. So what really causes these actual negative physical changes of sickness and disease to form in our bodies when we focus on problems in our body or on the stresses of life? The answer is our emotions. Our emotions are rarely mentioned in health programs and yet their effects are responsible for an overwhelming number of sicknesses, diseases and infirmities and I'm sure you're familiar with emotional links to things like overeating. Let me explain the processes involved here so that you can understand what I'm referring to and how you can manage the effects of your emotional state on your physical health. Emotional turmoil can be the result of two primary factors. Number one is stress from mental anguish caused by things like your job, your family life, or any of the events that are happening around you at any time. And number two is the physical strain that you place on your nervous system from things such as eating habits. Our emotions or feelings are the language of our nervous system. And our nervous system is active throughout our bodies. So if we violate it, we're in for some pain. So let's understand how it works and how we can use that knowledge to eliminate certain sicknesses and diseases. We'll start with something called depression, which as you know can manifest itself in different forms of sickness and disease, as I'm sure you've seen on television or read in magazines or books. What you may be unaware of is that this emotional problem can be caused by the physical intake of certain foods, 
Sugar, again, is the most popular example. Remember what I told you about making your blood sugar level rise rather rapidly and then taking a dive. That dive often results in depression. Do you know someone with a very high level of sugar intake? Chances are that person too will be racked with emotional problems. The reason I mention this on this Extraordinary Health CD program is because emotional stress will cause physical sickness probably faster and more severely than any other avenue. If we can learn to manage our emotional state, we can eliminate problems such as many types of stomach ulcers, skin diseases and other problems associated with self-inflicted medical conditions brought about by emotional strain on our physical bodies. The reason some people overeat is to change the way they feel. Now why does that work? You're feeling bad, you go out to get a tub of ice cream. Even some of the ladies may be familiar with this process, I think. And then you eat yourself into a stupor. What happens? Well, temporarily you feel better. Then, later, you go and you look in the mirror and see that you're picking up weight, which makes you feel bad again. So in order to change your state, you go out and get a supersized McDonald's burger, fries and a Coke. And you eat that to make yourself feel better. The worst part is that it works again, temporarily. And this cycle perpetuates. Now, I've got a question for you. Why does it make us feel better when we eat? Well, eating is probably the fastest, simplest and most accessible way for us to change both our physiology and biochemistry. Think about it. Do your breathing patterns change when you eat? Do your facial muscles begin to change, particularly when you're eating in a manner most people popularly call stuff in your face? Do you take on a different posture after you've finished three Big Macs, two large fries and two large Cokes? Does your body experience a change in its chemical balance when you drink that soft drink that usually contains at least around one-eighth sugar content or caffeine or some other stimulant? You bet they do. The answer to all these questions is a resounding yes. So the challenge for us would be to find out how we could handle the intensity of our emotional needs without trying to bury them under a mountain of food. Now again, if you're having a challenge in this area, we have programs and strategies to effectively manage our emotional states and the things we experience in our nervous system. Just give our office a call and we'll give you more information on how you can get hold of these materials or attend those seminars and radically improve the quality of your life overnight literally. We don't have time on the CD, obviously, to handle those topics like emotional mastery or state management changes. What is important for you on this CD is that you realize if you're experiencing health problems related to stress, it's probably caused by the process of sensitizing your nervous system by using stimulants such as caffeine or sugar, or by the physical stress that results from placing pressure on your digestive system resulting from overeating and other improper eating habits. When you eat foods containing stimulants, what happens is that your nervous system kicks into overdrive. It basically gets wired. In this agitated state, your digestive juices are secreted in abundance since your whole body is really in a state of overactivity. This chemical imbalance is often what causes stomach problems and ulcers. This is therefore a biochemical problem that can be avoided by keeping your chemical intake of stimulants to a minimum. Now you probably already know that, so let me take you a step further to show you the value of the information that you're learning. The most common reason that most of us find ourselves overindulging in those stimulants is habit. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a virtual ritual that you practice every single day? Are you one of those people that get themselves a cup of coffee before sitting down at their work desk without even thinking about it anymore? It's just a conditioned reaction. It's something that you do when you step into your office. Well, if you are one of those people, you're not alone. Every day, thousands of us practice these kind of behaviors that are as much rituals as the ceremonial changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. So how do we go about effectively making changes to these behaviors without feeling that we're losing or giving something up? Well, you've already successfully taken the first step if you've identified yourself as one of those people. And that first step is awareness of your ritual. Awareness in itself is almost curative. The second step would be to get leverage. That means you need to get yourself to where you not only want to change, 
but believe that you can and must make the change. So how do we accomplish this? Realize that your health, energy and quality of life depend upon you making this change. That if you continue to practice these rituals, you'll have to continue to put up with ill health and a mediocre energy level. How much will that cost you in the future? How many doctor's bills will you have to pay? Something we don't like to think about, but it's an important motivating factor if you want to get yourself to really make the change. How many special family events will you miss because you're sick again? Think of the total cost, not just for today or this year, but five years into the future, then ten years, and fifteen or even twenty. How fully will you have experienced your life? Maybe you wouldn't even have another fifteen years in you if you don't change. Next, think of the joy and satisfaction of knowing that you still have the opportunity to change today and how easy it will be to make even one change in your daily ritual. Missing just one cup of coffee in the morning means that you get to miss over 1,825 doses of biochemical altering stimulant over the next five year period. That's probably at the very least the equivalent of saving yourself from experiencing two major ulcers. Think of the time you can spend with your family and loved ones instead of having to be in pain and spend your time in the doctor's office and in pharmacies. Continue this process until you have enough leverage on yourself to know that you will follow through on your plan. Now what I want you to do is to see yourself reaching for that cup of chemical altering stimulant just as you normally would, that cup of coffee or whatever it is. Just as you're about to pick it up, I want you to see a picture of yourself bursting out of the cup and saying, Surprise! Does that sound a little juvenile? Well, do it anyway. If you want to totally reverse the negative ritual, you might have yourself bursting out of the cup and saying, Surprise! Let's have a juice to celebrate! If you'll imagine the scene over and over, as fast as you can, about 15 times, it will become a conditioned response whenever you're about to pick up a mug or glass of chemical stimulant, whatever it might be whether it be in the form of a soft drink or a hot beverage. If you've just been listening to this process and thinking it's crazy, I dare you to try it. This program is about simple and effective ways to guarantee extraordinary health, and it can only work for you if you use the neurotechnology that it incorporates. As simple or as juvenile as it sounds, you can see that the process I've just described is simple, but if you'll practice it right now, I guarantee results. And that's what we're looking for at the end of the day. The next section I want to bring to your attention is your body's pharmacy. This could be one of the single most valuable lessons you could ever learn. I'm not here to take away your options and make you eat foods that you don't want to or to give you advice that you can't use. Any and all of the exercises and the information that I provide for you on this audio CD is designed to be practical and to expand your options, not to make you feel like you're losing something. When our brain thinks that we're going to lose something or feel pain, it does everything it can to avoid it. Why do you think most of us avoid dieting? The first three letters of that word should give you a clue. It makes us feel like we're about to die. In the powerful, though humorous exercise I've given you about cutting down your stimulant intake, I haven't taken anything away from you. You could return to your old ritual at any time if you choose to. I've simply effectively conditioned and sensitized your brain to the ritual that you've installed thereby giving you the option of deviating from a destructive ritual should you see the value in freeing your body from those harmful toxins. So what is our body's pharmacy? And what does it mean to us? Well, researchers have discovered years ago that our body is a virtual biological pharmacy. It has the capacity to manufacture every drug or pharmaceutical substance known to man. It has the inherent capacity to produce everything from hydrochloric acid to valium to cortisol, to adrenaline, to various antibodies, and a whole lot more. The benefits of these drugs versus those you buy from the pharmacy down the road is that they are produced in the correct dosage and in the correct target organs at the correct rate and at no cost, which with today's medical fees is a major advantage to say the least. So what keeps us from experiencing the benefits of having this onboard pharmacy available to us? Well, the answer to that question is astonishing to say the least. And I'm going to make use of an allegory to explain the process. An allegory is simply a story that can effectively communicate the point that I'm trying to convey. 
Here's the analogy. Imagine you were going on a ride at a theme park like we have at Century City in Cape Town. We have a ride called the Cobra in a theme park called Ratanga Junction. It's a wild roller coaster-like ride where you're locked into a harness and your feet are left free to swing beneath you as this ride goes through gut-wrenching twists, turns and dives. Doesn't that sound romantic? Now, let's say you were invited on this ride by a friend. If you were to get on the ride and go for a spin, literally, and your interpretation of this experience was, Oh Lord, I'm going to die. And so your experience was that of sheer terror. Guess what would happen? Your body's internal pharmacy would begin to churn out adrenaline and cortisol a, and a bunch of other chemical agents that are harmful to your delicate body chemistry and can literally eat away at your body if they're produced in high concentrations. Nervous tension is part of our fight or flight response and is absolutely necessary. But our body is not designed to remain in those states for prolonged periods of time. The chemical substances our body produces at those times are useful in priming our body to react in an instant and to avoid pain, but are lethal to us when they are produced in high concentrations and sustained over long periods of time. You can literally poison yourself from within. On the other hand, if we take the aforementioned roller coaster ride, and let's say you are the type of person who gets ultimate pleasure and fun from having your body spin around in gyrating movements around a train-like track at exceedingly high speeds, you'll find a completely different dynamic at work. Your body will begin to produce a substance called endorphins, which are morphine-like peptides naturally produced in the brain which bind to certain neuron receptors and have the effect of diminishing pain, or in less fancy terms, painkillers. Your body may even, depending on your interpretation of the event, produce a chemical substance called Valium. Unlike the Valium we find manufactured by modern science, this Valium is the true substance of tranquility, allowing your body to replace damaged functions or cells in a healthy and nurturing environment versus the environment we spoke of earlier, teeming with substances that deplete and actually harm your body. Now the reason I said all that was to say this, the difference between your body's effective manufacture of supportive chemical substances and the flooding of your system with harmful and destructive substances comes down to one thing, and that is the way you interpret your life's experiences. Our interpretation of what things mean to us can be the difference between experiencing vibrant health or a life that is fraught with pain and infirmity. So what can you do about this knowledge? How can we use this? Well, decide today to re-evaluate the way you are experiencing life. Are things as bad as you think they are? Or are you placing expectations of what things should be like upon yourself and thereby robbing yourself of the experience of joy and fulfillment that comes with living your life to its fullest? I am aware that the information I'm providing you with today is not typically the kind of information that you'd find on health programs or medical journals. But I do believe that this information is important because these are scientifically proven facts. Our body do produce these chemicals. Our bodies do undergo these changes depending on what our focus is upon and depending upon our interpretation of the things that happen to us. So these factors are all important and they literally do determine the quality of your life that you experience every single day. So please pay attention to them. Don't gloss over them. Don't consider them unimportant facts. Your decision to change your interpretation of events in your life could prove to be the key that puts you over in the area of health. Here's one more thing. Have you ever seen those advertisements claiming that you can lose weight without diet or exercise? Well, in my experience, there's only one way you can achieve those results, and that is through a little something called disease. Since this entire CD program is about health, I doubt that we want to spend very much time on that. You see, the truth is, there is no means besides an effective eating plan and some form of aerobic exercise that can produce those results. So, how do we get ourselves to follow through on exercise and to follow through on changing our eating habits? Well, there's good news. In just a moment, I'll share with you an eating plan that will not call for you to sacrifice any of your favorite foods. And right now, first, I'm going to put a smile on your face about exercise. Impossible? Well, keep listening and I think I'll be able to prove it to you quite effectively. 
Dynamic activity is a part of life. As a matter of fact, it's a necessity. Remember when we spoke about the way that muscular activity and breathing were the only two ways that we could get circulation in our lymphatic system? Well, that clues us in to its importance. On the bright side, exercise can take a variety of forms. All it would require is for you to find some form of exercise that suits your personality. There is no need to run out and join a gym or buy a home fitness center since most people who do never use those resources anyway. So just how do we get ourselves off our currently unshapely derriere in order to get the process started? Find an activity that you enjoy that meets these simple criteria and you'll have an exercise that you love and that actually works. What a concept. Isn't that unique? <laughs> Here are the criteria. You must be able to do it daily, and it must be aerobic versus anaerobic, and it must get your muscles moving. Those are the only criteria. Simple? Of course. That's what this program is about. Breathing is as vital a part of any exercise as has been proven earlier in the program. Let me just clarify what I mean when I say to make sure it's an aerobic exercise and not an anaerobic one. Most forms of exercise can be either anaerobic or aerobic. The level of intensity determines whether an exercise is anaerobic or aerobic. Lower heart rate indicates aerobic activity, and the higher heart rate indicates anaerobic activity. Things like jogging or a brisk walk or an easy dance routine are typically aerobic, where activities like weightlifting or basketball tend to be anaerobic. If you don't like walking, try skipping or trampolining. Have some fun with formulating an enjoyable activity that you can practice every single day. Now let's move on to nutrition. Consider the fact that our body is made up of approximately 80% water. Most of us know this and have heard of the value of drinking water. That's not where I'm going with this point. Yes, I do believe that any time we can drink some water, preferably filtered water of some kind, we are doing our bodies a great favor. The reason I recommend some form of filtered water or bottled water is obviously due to the fact that most of our tap water is riddled with excess chlorine, fluoride and a host of other chemicals which don't do our bodies any favors. But further than that, I want to bring your attention to the value of maintaining a diet of water-rich foods. That's the distinction I want to make here. Specifically, unprocessed fruits and vegetables are the best source of this natural water content. No, beer does not count. Look, when most of us try to increase our water intake, what happens? We end up drowning ourselves in about 10 glasses of water per day and sticking to that for about a week before returning to our old habits and now avoiding water like a plague because we're sick of it. Instead of that painful process, here's a suggestion. Just try and make sure that 70% of your diet consists of water-rich foods, and that's simpler than it sounds. So how can you do that? Well, make or order a salad with every meal that you have, and snack on fruit in between meals instead of clogging your system with chocolate. That's all that it takes. Just get yourself to order or make a salad with every dish that you eat. I mean, think about it today. I'm not sure what time of the day it is when you're listening to this program, but think about it. Have you had any water-rich foods today? If you would just have water-rich foods with each meal, you'll find yourself increasing your water intake, and that'll increase your body's ability to cleanse itself, and it'll increase your energy level, and it'll provide you with the nutrients that your body needs to function effectively. One quick little note that I'd like to make right here is to listen to your body. I'll explain to you exactly what I mean in just a minute, but listening to your body can prove key to avoiding certain sicknesses and diseases before they happen. Our body can recognize the presence of most anti-health agents and lack of certain nutrients and vitamins long before our bodies produce the symptoms of those factors in the form of illnesses or vitamin deprivation or disease. The most well-known of this form of phenomena or bodily communication with us is probably the instance of cravings. That is most often what we should be looking for in our body's communication with us. Have you ever found that you are craving a certain fruit or vegetable that usually you have no desire for? Or maybe you're thirsty. Although you're surrounded by a host of beverages, your body seems to long for clear water. Ensuring that you heed these signals will be ensuring your health. This simple act can prevent many forms of illness before they manifest in your body. 
Usually things like the flu or colds or certain stomach conditions and skin problems can be successfully avoided or overcome by heeding these cravings. How do you know what is the right substance to eat? Trust your body and begin eating or drinking the natural foodstuffs that your body craves for from time to time. And remember, I said natural foodstuffs. A craving for deep fried chicken and a bucket of ice cream would really be the voice of your body describing its nutritional needs, unless you're pregnant. On the subject of fruit and vegetables, many of us don't enjoy the taste and that's our main barrier. Listen, we are blessed in that there are a variety of fruit and vegetables that contain the vitamins and nutrients that our body requires. Find the fruit and vegetables that you can enjoy. Oranges aren't the only source of vitamin C. If you don't like oranges, try blackberries or grapes. Take some time and look into your diet. See what you may be lacking and find the foods that meet the need and tantalize your taste buds at the same time. It will only take a few hours to research and once you've made your eating plans, you can follow them for a lifetime. That small investment of time could keep you energized, vibrant and healthy for the rest of your life. There is a lot more on this vast subject that I could share, but I can't quite fit into this one CD. I have designed the CD to highlight the strategies that can instantaneously and dramatically increase your level of health and vibrancy, and I hope that you'll apply everything that you've heard. Also, please, as always, consult your doctor before making any drastic changes to your nutritional eating plan or exercise routines. Let's just take a few moments to recap on some of the things that we've learnt on the CD so that you can begin to put them into practice right away. Remember the breathing exercises. 10 breaths 3 times a day according to the ratio that I gave you and you'll be amazed at the results that will occur in your physical body. You'll feel more vibrant, you'll have more energy and you'll also know that it stimulates your lymphatic system. Then we spoke about biochemistry and how that our biochemistry is quite delicate and we need to take care of when we're eating substances such as simple carbohydrates like sugar which tend to give us sugar shock and send us spiraling downwards at the end of the day. Things which also affect us are emotions. We learned that we need to find some sort of stress management courses or some way to manage and handle our stresses in our lives lest they manifest in our body. We also spoke about mental focus. We spoke about how young people studying at university often tend to manifest symptoms in their body about the subjects that they've been focusing on in med school, such as certain sicknesses or diseases. So we need to guard our mental focus. Then we went over through to emotions. We spoke about things like depression, how the depression can obviously cause sicknesses in our body. And we learned that we need to discover techniques and technology in order to combat that. We spoke about physiology, how that physiology is an effective way to generate resourcefulness in our body. So if we stand, breathe, and act the way we do when we are healthy, very often our body will be able to stand against the diseases and sicknesses which try and place themselves on our body quite effectively. Then we took it a step further and we spoke about the different stimulants, things like sugar or caffeine that tend to become a habit in our lives and we learned how to effectively overcome that habit using a very simple technique that just allows us to ridicule it so we realize each time we go into the office or whatever the habit is, we see it, we recognize it, we notice this is just a habit and we are able to effectively take a change of course, a change of action and make a change in life that can ultimately improve the quality of our health. We learned also how important awareness is of those particular rituals to help us avoid falling into those same things over and over. Then we spoke about another aspect of our interpretation of what things mean to us. We learned that our body naturally produces chemical pharmaceuticals and chemical byproducts which can either help or hinder our health. And we learned that the only difference what determines which of those pharmaceuticals are produced in our body is our interpretation of what events mean to us. If we interpret that we are having a great time at this event, if we interpret that we are having a pleasurable experience, a tranquil experience, that's exactly the experience that our body will produce in us using the chemical pharmaceuticals that our body is able to produce in our built-in pharmacy. We also learned that the opposite is true, so we need to control our interpretation, we need to control what exactly it is we believe that's happening to us at any moment in time and use that to produce the results that we want in our bodies. We also spoke about exercise, how that in order for exercise to be effective, it has to be done daily, it has to be aerobic, and it has to move your muscles. Those are the only three criteria that are really necessary for an exercise to be effective, and how you can go about choosing any exercise that will meet those criteria and develop an effective exercise routine that can take you to your physical goals. Then we also spoke about 
things like water-rich foods and how you can effectively produce a plan, an eating plan, so that you eat a water-rich diet. So you won't have to drown yourself in 10 glasses of water. You simply have a salad with each meal and snack on fruit in between. You also learn to obey cravings. If you have a craving at any time for natural foods such as water or fruit or vegetables, we need to obey those cravings. I know that I'm going at incredible speed here. Just stay with me. Just recapping. I only have a few moments left. And then we also learned about the importance of variety of fruit and vegetables and how we can find fruits and vegetables that meet our nutritional needs without having to give up the foods that we enjoy and without having to eat foods that we really don't enjoy. Give your health the place of priority it deserves. Once you understand how your body and brain evaluates the events that take place in our life, you'll find it simple to make those changes in yourself and in those around you too. Once again, I'd like to thank you for listening and remind you that if you have a passion in life, we give you the power to live it.